The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with another exciting story from his brilliant career. This master of the big cats captures ferocious jungle beasts and trains them to perform under the big top in the circus, where there are always thrills, action, and danger. Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is the story of Jungle Joe. On the west coast of Africa, just below the equator, lies the small port of Motadi at the mouth of the Congo River. It was there a few years ago that my wife Harriet and I journeyed, hoping to procure some animals for our circus. The trip on the coastwise steamer from Accra had been hot and uninteresting. We wasted no time in getting ashore. What about the luggage, Clyde? All taken care of, honey. They'll see that it gets taken right from the boat to the hotel in town. Oh, I hope that hotel has an electric fan. I'm just going to park right in front of it. From what I hear, I wouldn't bet that Motadi boasted such a luxury as electricity. <laughs> but I'll settle for a few good animals. Oh, so will I. According to my figures, if we can get the ones we want here instead of from a dealer in the States, we'll save enough to completely redecorate the house in California, get some new clothes, and pay all our expenses for the trip. Oh, you've got it all figured out, huh? <laughs> Certainly. And what's more, we... Clyde, listen. It sounds like our menagerie tent before feeding time. This warehouse. It must be full of animals. Well, come on. The door's open. Let's have a look. Clyde, look. Holy mackerel, animals galore. Well, there must be a dozen lions in those cages. And over there are some zebras. Well, a little bit of everything. Looks like our information was right. This is the place to stop. I wonder if they're for sale. We'll soon find out. Let's go ask that native boy out there. There must be a small fortune in wild animals here, Clyde. Yeah, somebody's going to clean up on this ship. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. How's your pigeon English, pigeon? <laughs> You're on your own, Clyde. Boy. Animals inside. Animals. Who belong? Animals. Belong Jungle Joe. Jungle Joe? Jungle Joe who? That's animals. Belong Jungle Joe. Other side my daddy lives. What does he mean, Clyde? I think he must mean the animals belong to some dealer called Jungle Joe and that he lives on the other side of town. Boy, you take us Jungle Joe? He doesn't seem to understand, Clyde. Wait a second. Here, boy. Now, you take us to Jungle Joe. Bueno! Bueno! <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful how a little coin of the realm will help a native understand English. Thanks, boy. We can make it now. Bueno! Bueno! Oh, see the sign, Clyde? Jungle Joe, wild animal dealer. Expeditions outfitted. Yeah, we're in luck, maybe. If this guy's animals are already sold, we'll hire him to lead us after some more. Watch the steps here. Oh. Come in. Well. Hello. Hello. What can I do for you? Well, we saw some animals in a warehouse down at the dock, and we're told they belong to somebody called Jungle Joe. We'd like to talk to him. <laughs> I'm afraid it'll be impossible to talk to him, mister. Huh? You see, I am Jungle Joe. Now, we return to our story, Jungle Joe. When Harriet and I learned that the attractive young girl was Jungle Joe, a wild animal dealer, our surprise could not be concealed. She wasn't more than 25, and it seemed impossible that she could have captured all the wild animals we'd seen in the warehouse. We discovered that her real name was Josephine Gerard. You see, Mr. Beatty, my father was an animal dealer. He brought me here when I was only seven. He used to take me with him on all of his expeditions into the jungle. <laughs> Well, I could speak Swahili better than English by the time I was ten. It's, it's amazing. I still can't believe it. Whatever made you decide to follow in your father's footsteps, Joe? Well, to tell the truth, my reasons were more economic than sentimental, Mrs. Beatty. When my father passed away two years ago, I had no family to go to, so I decided if I had to make a living, I'd better stick with something I know. Mm, from the looks of that warehouse, you've done all right, too. Yes, I've been lucky. Of course, the animals you saw represent a year's work. I'll be glad to get my money for them. I don't blame you. And we'd like to take some of them off your hands. Harriet's right. We'd like five or six lions. Oh, I'm and terribly sorry, but they're already spoken for, Mr. Beatty. Oh. There's a boat due in a week, and 
I promised to ship them all to a dealer in London. I was afraid of something like this. Would any of the other animal dealers in this territory have anything for sale? Well, let's see now. I'm afraid you've come at the wrong time. Carter from Leopoldville up river is on a safari now. Rogers, the other dealer here in Matadi, just sold a shipment the other day. Looks as if we'll have to go after our own, then. Could you outfit and lead an expedition for us, Joe? Well, not right away, I couldn't. My next expedition is a very special one. Until I've made it, I'm not taking on anything else. A special expedition, you say? Very special, Mr. Beatty. As soon as I get payment for the animals in the warehouse, I'm going after a full-grown gorilla. A gorilla? Well, you can't be serious. I thought capturing an adult gorilla was practically impossible. <laughs> so they tell me. But there's bound to be a way, and if I can find it, it'll be worth $25,000. Well, for that kind of money, I don't blame you for being interested. Uh, who is it that wants it so badly? The London Zoo. They've had a standing order for one since before my father died. Well, I'd think every dealer in Africa would be after one then. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm lucky again. If they knew where to find one, it'd be a mad scramble. But I'm the only one in the Congo who knows where to look. You know where you can find a gorilla? Yes. On my last expedition, I ran across unmistakable signs. I want to hurry back and try my luck before another dealer discovers my secret. Sounds interesting. I wish we could join you. So do I. Why don't you? <laughs> Maybe it sounds silly, but we're much more interested in lions than gorillas. No, I guess we'll just have to look somewhere else for our animals. Oh, I'm sorry. I wish I could help you, but... Well, I've been planning on going after a gorilla for a long time now, and I just don't want to put it off any longer. We understand, Joe. And I wish you all the luck in the world. Oh, thank you. Mr. Joe! Mr. Mr. Carl! Mr. Joe! What's the matter, Carl? Mr. Joe, warehouse is big burning up. What? Warehouse is big fire, Mr. Joe. Oh, no, the animals. We've got to get them out. No use, Joe. We're too late to do anything. Oh, we've got to try. No, no, you I'm... can't go any closer. Oh, let me go. We've got to get them out of there. Joe, the animals are already dead. Oh. They couldn't live through that smoke. They're suffocated already. Oh. Joe, let's go back to your house. I, I've got a better idea, Harriet. Let's take Joe back to the hotel with us. How about it, Joe? Uh, I don't care. Come along, Joe. It's no good looking at this. How about this, anyway? Iced tea in the Congo. Uh, would you like another, Joe? No, thank you. Try to stop thinking about what's happened, Joe. It couldn't be helped. I know, but... We understand how you feel. Even though they were animals, it's still a horrible way to die. How could that fire have started? How? Mm, it's pretty hard to tell. There was a lot of hay in the warehouse. Might have been started by a careless smoker, maybe even spontaneous combustion. Seeing this man coming toward our table just made me think of something. Man? Oh. Who is he, Joe? Rogers, the other wild animal dealer here in the party. Ah, hello there, Joe. Just heard about what happened at your warehouse. It was mighty tough luck. Yes, wasn't it? Mr. Rogers, Mr. and Mrs. Beatty. Ah, glad to meet you folks. How do you do? Hello. Well, Rogers, looks as if your competition just went up in smoke. I guess I'm whipped. Ah, it's a shame it had to happen, Joe. Now, this game isn't for a woman. You should have gotten out when your father died. Maybe you're right. I suppose that equipment of mine you were renting was destroyed, too? Yes. Everything. Uh, Rogers, I don't think this is quite the time to bring up business. Uh, perhaps you're right. But you surely can't blame me for being concerned about what belongs to me. After all, Joe here had almost $3,000 worth of my safari equipment in that warehouse. I'm sure you'll get your money when the insurance is paid. There wasn't any insurance wasn't to be in effect until the animals were loaded aboard the boat. Oh, no. I... I don't know when I'll be able to pay you, Rogers. But I will, somehow. I see. Tell you what I'll do, Joe. I'm willing to forget that equipment if you'll forget about being in the animal business and leave this territory to me. You've been wanting it that way for a long time now, haven't you, Rogers? Oh, well, I would... Never mind. And your proposition couldn't have come at a better time. After what's happened today, I guess I don't have much choice. So... Wait a minute, Joe. What? You can't give up just because of what happened, Joe. Why, you'll be back on your feet in no time once you've captured that gorilla and... Uh, gorilla? I mean... <laughs> you'll have to excuse my wife, Roger. She uh, has a vivid imagination and thinks her gorillas and all sorts of animals in this territory. Uh, yes. 
Yes, of course. But Joe won't have to fold up if she doesn't want to. What do you mean, Mr. Beatty? You seem to have forgotten why we're here. We want some wild animals. We're prepared to finance an expedition for them if you'll lead it. Oh, but, but she... You're on, Mr. Beatty. When do we start? Good for you, Joe. I... I think you'd be smarter to do business with me, Beatty. And I think you'd be smarter to hit the road. I don't like the way you operate, Rogers. Very well. Let's go back to my place and make plans. Don't count on renting any of my equipment from now on, Joe. I won't be able to spare it. All right, I won't. We'll manage, though. Come on, folks. Two days after meeting Jungle Joe, we arrived at the capital of the Belgian Congo, Leopoldville. We stopped there only long enough to get supplies and equipment and then headed up the muddy Congo on a small river steamer. We had decided on trying to capture a gorilla first and then getting the other animals that I wanted. Oh, what I'd give for an air-conditioned room about now. It's pretty bad, all right. It feels like rain. Mind if I see that map, Joe? No. I was just going to show you where we are now. Good. All I know is that we're in the middle of a river swarming with crocodiles and bordered by the densest jungle I've ever seen. Well, we'll soon be in that jungle, Clyde. Uh, See here on the map? Uh, That's where we are now. Oh. In another hour or so, we should arrive at Mukambi. Mukambi? Yes, it's a very small native village. And you're sure we can get all the natives we'll need there, huh? Oh, yes. Caro used to live in Mukambi before he joined my father. He'll see that we get some good men. How far is this uh, gorilla territory from Mukambi? Oh, well... About 20 miles or so into the jungle, I guess. We'll have to stick to the game trail to get there. It sounds awfully exciting, doesn't it, Clyde? Sure does, honey. Being after a gorilla would be plenty exciting in Central Park, <laughs> let alone in this jungle. Well, I promise it won't be dull. And by this time tomorrow afternoon, we'll be in gorilla territory. <laughs> How are you doing, honey? Oh, I'm all right, Clyde. Well, I see how those natives carrying all those flies can keep going. Oh, we'll have to make camp in a few minutes. And we can all get some rest. But it's only four o'clock, Joe. I know, but in another hour it'll be pitch dark. It comes on awfully fast here in the jungle here. Oh. Who's that calling? It's Carlo up ahead. What is it, Carlo? What? What is Joe? Colorado. Well, what's he saying, Joe? Colorado. Magado Jarek. Where, Carlo? Speak English. In trail. You come see. He says there are gorilla tracks just ahead. Come on. Well, what are we waiting for? Here, boy. Look. Tracks. Good boy, Carlo. That's a gorilla, all right. Brother, look at the size of those footprints. Carlo, we must make camp at once. Hurry, tell the men. You, Carlo, stand by yes, with rifle. Yes, boy. Joe, you act Come worried. Well, I am worried, Harriet. Those tracks are fresh. These... They weren't made more than 15 minutes ago. Well, there's nothing to get excited about, though, is there? I don't know. I'm remembering what Dad used to say about gorillas. What was that, Joe? That they're the one animal that's not afraid of man. A big gorilla might actually attack our whole party. We've got to be ready, just in case. Turn now to Clyde Beatty and Jungle Joe. Clyde and Harriet Beatty were deep in the jungles of the Congo on an expedition led by a young woman animal dealer called Jungle Joe. Just before dark, they discovered footprints made by a huge gorilla and hurriedly made camp. Harriet, you and Joe better try and get some sleep. I'll keep this fire going and see that the natives keep working on the net. I couldn't sleep now, Clyde. Oh, neither could I. But I guess there's not too much to worry about now. I've posted a native on each side of the clearing to keep watch. How are the men coming with the net, Clyde? Oh, they're doing fine. You know, that's pretty clever, Joe, making a big net out of the jungle vines. Oh, I just hope it works. There's only one thing that bothers me. How are we going to know if it works, or rather, when it works? Mm, I don't know. I guess we'll have to go back from time to time and see if anything's happened. Why not take one of the rifles and hide it in the brush and attach a wire to the trigger so when the trap is sprung, the rifle will fire? Oh, of course. Like we used to hook up our cameras for animals to take their own pictures when we were in India. Yeah. It's a wonderful idea, Clyde. I'll put you in charge of that part of the project. Of course, a rifle shot won't carry too far through this jungle. We'll have to set the trap fairly close to camp. Listen. Hear it? Drums. Well, the Western Union of the Congo is at work. I wonder what it's all about. I don't know. It's one language only the natives understand. Oh, Carl. Yes, Juan Joe. Carl, come. The drums, Carl. What do they say? Message from 
big headman at Macombie. He say, another safari come this way. Another safari heading this way? Are you sure, Carl? Carl, sure. He say, one white man, many bushmen follow our trail, Wanajo. Somebody following us? But who? Rogers. It must be Rogers. Thank you, Carl. Yes, Wanajo. Rogers. So he didn't forget what I let slip about your capturing a gorilla, Joe. That's it. He let us lead him right to the prize, I'm too. awfully sorry, Joe. It was stupid of Oh, me. forget it, Harriet. If anybody else, it would have been passed unnoticed. But Rogers isn't noted for being honorable. But how could he follow us? That would be quite simple, I'm afraid. The natives in every village along the way saw us going upriver. And he's figuring on beating our time, huh? He's going to try catching a gorilla and getting it back to Matadi first. Yes, it looks that way, and our chances of success won't be helped much by another safari coming this way. Well, he must be several hours behind us, so they can't get close until sometime tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. He won't be traveling at night. We'll just have to get going with our plan early in the morning. If we're lucky, he'll be too late to spoil anything. How does this look to you, Joe? The trail's quite narrow here. Lots of vines overhead. Oh, this ought to be perfect. Some good saplings here, too. Hold up, Carl. Yes, Flora. Tell the men to unroll the vine net. Yeah. Well, Harriet, would you like some of the bait before we hook it up? Oh, thanks, Clyde. <laughs> I love bananas, but I'm not hungry now. Imagine trapping a gorilla with a stalk of bananas. That should be as tempting as anything to a gorilla. All right, Carl. Now fasten the corner vines to the saplings. Bend them back a little further. Right. That'll do it. Uh, pull that wire just a little tighter, Clyde. Uh, there. How's that? Uh, that's fine. Is it all set now, Joe? Well, except covering that little wire with leaves. <laughs> Boy, talk about Rube Goldberg. <laughs> this one really takes the cake. <laughs> gorilla, number one, comes down trail and discovers stalk of bananas, number two. Gorilla grabs bananas, which pulls wire, number three, releasing saplings, number four, which spring back and throw net, number five, down over gorilla. <laughs> and at the same time, wire attached to sapling pulls trigger on rifle, number six, which shoots and warns intrepid hunters trap has been strung. <laughs> oh, that's my husband. <laughs> You know, I was pretty skeptical till we got this contraption rigged up, but now I think it might work at that. Well, let's just hope some other animal doesn't come along and set it off. Joe, don't even think of that. You want to jinx the works? Uh-oh, there goes some more thunder. Sounds like it might mean business this time. I hope so, anyway. You're hoping it rains? Yes, it'll wash away our scent here and improve our chances, and it will also slow Roger. It's all fixed now, Barnett Joe. All right, Carl. Tell the men to come along. We're heading back for camp. to be letting up a bit now. About time, too. The three of us cramped up in this little tent for hours is not my idea of a good time. Oh, it'll probably stop as suddenly as it started. Something's going on outside. Oh, let me have a look here. What is it, Clark? Oh, it looks like we've got company. It's Rogers. I was afraid he'd show up just in time to spoil everything. Well, well, well. Small world, isn't it? May I come in? Yes, come in, Rogers. Ah, thanks. I've made camp only a half a mile or so back the trail. Thought I should... Hey, you folks a visit. Well, that was very thoughtful. But I have an idea you didn't come just to be neighborly. What's on your mind? <laughs> yeah, smart girl, Joe. I'll be honest. I know why you're here, of course, and I'm here for the same reason. Nothing like taking advantage of someone, eh, Rogers? Oh, I wouldn't put it that way, baby. Since my safari is on hand, I thought we might join forces in the hunt for a gorilla. Thanks, but no thanks, Rogers. Yeah, but we'd have a much better chance that way, and we could split the 25,000 two ways, Joe. The answer is no. As far as I'm concerned, it's all or nothing. But Joe, that's not the I way... I think you heard the lady, Rogers. I'm talking to Joe Beatty. Suppose you keep out of this and mind your own business. It happens this is my business. Now get going and don't come back. <laughs> and supposing I should come back? Then what? Then I'm afraid you and I are going to tangle, Rogers, and I'd love nothing better than separating you from your front teeth. Clyde, please. That was a shot. Something sprung our trap. Come on. Hey, where are you going? Stick around, Rogers. We may have a surprise for you. It's just around this bend in the trail. Something's in that net, all right. Look, oh, it's worked. We've got ourselves a gorilla. And a big one. Look at that baby fight that vine net. Clyde, right, will it hold it? Caro, have the men get more vines. Hurry. Where are the men with the cage? They were right behind us. They'll be here in a minute. All right, Caro, have them wind more vines around it. Hurry. Not too close there. Watch it. It's got hold of one of the men. <laughs> 
Stay back. I'll club at his arm with my rifle. Carlo, he's let go. Pull this man back. You men, bring that cake up close. Hurry. That's it. Right up here now. All right. Help me push him in here. Come on, the rest of you men. Hurry up. Well, Harriet, I'm sorry. We can't continue and get the animals you need, but I guess we'd better head back toward McCombie. And that suits me. The sooner we get rid of that ugly brute of a gorilla, the better. Well, the cage will hold all right. I'm glad we made it plenty strong. That's one powerful animal. Has he settled down now? <laughs> yeah. Only he turned out to be a girl gorilla. She's pretty well worn out from the struggle, though. Ah, you're wasting no time in breaking camp, I see. We got what we came for, Rogers. No you staying around here. Ah, that's exactly the way I feel. We're leaving now, too. Shall we return to the company together? Why, well, Yes, I guess so, if you like. We're hitting the trail at dawn. You and your party can bring up the rear, Rogers. We're going to have our hands full getting this gorilla back. All right, that'll be fine. We'll join you when you come along, then. We're making better time than I expected. We must be almost halfway to Macumbi already. Think we can make it before dark? No, I doubt it. We may have to make camp a few miles short. Clyde, what happened to Rogers? Huh? Well, he was at the rear of the column just a minute ago. Caro was near him. I'll ask. Caro? Yes, Bono Bailey? Where is Bono Rogers, Caro? He stopped back at spring in trail. He say he fill water bag catch up in minutes. Well, we may as well wait here and rest. Ah, and then... Listen. Oh, it's Rogers. He's in trouble. Caro, bring them in. Hurry. Clyde, it's another gorilla. It's got Rogers. It must be the mate to the one we got. It's a huge one. It'll tear him to ribbons. What can we do? I'll have to shoot. But you might hit Rogers. I'll have to take that chance. Clyde, you did it. You've killed the gorilla. Come on. Oh, he's still alive, Joe. But he's in bad shape. We've got to get him to a doctor, Clyde. The nearest doctor is in Leopoldville. He won't last long enough to make that. Isn't there anyone in Macombie who, who could do something for him? There's a native there who might help. He's hardly more than a witch doctor, though. We'd better get him there anyway. It'll mean traveling part of the way at night, but we can make torches and keep going somehow. All right, Caro, have the men make a litter to carry Buono Rogers. And hurry. We managed to get Rogers to Macombie, and the native doctor surprised us. Didn't have much bedside manner, but he got results. When Rogers was out of danger, we boarded the river steamer once more, and several days later arrived back at Matadi. Our time was running short, so we made arrangements for the return to the States. I, I hate to see you folks go. You've been so wonderful. We hate to leave, too, Joe. But if we're going to put a circus on the road this spring, we'd better get back. I was hoping you'd stay and go after some of the animals you came for in the first place. But don't worry. Before your season starts, I'll have a shipment to you. Oh, that's swell, Joe. And it's a relief to know that Rogers won't be giving you any more trouble. He seemed to have a complete change of heart. Oh, we'll get along all right now, I know. But I do want to thank you again for helping me out. I could never have captured that gorilla without your help. Sure you could. But we enjoyed it. It was kind of a challenge to us, too. <laughs> a challenge Clyde couldn't resist, Joe. You don't think he'd let a gorilla make a monkey of him, do you? <laughs> and now, here is Clyde Beatty to tell about his next adventure. Why anyone would deliberately choose the hazardous occupation of animal training for a life's work, even I can't explain. Whenever eager young men come to me asking for a start toward such a career, I do everything possible to discourage them. And usually, I'm successful. However, a few years ago, a youngster named Donato pleaded with me to coach him in the not-too-gentle art of escaping death in the arena. And this young man, I wasn't able to turn from his purpose. You'll learn why in our next exciting story called... Daniel in the Lion's Den. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. Jungle Joe was written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Tausig. All names used are fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.